Chapter 21 of Tom Swift and His Motorcycle. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Wayne Cook. Tom Swift and His Motorcycle by Victor Appleton. Eradicate gives a clue. Tell me all about it, urged Tom sympathetically for he had a friendly feeling towards the H. darkey. Well, began Eradicate, I so thought I was going to make money cutting grass, especially after you done fixed my mower. But appeared like ain't nobody wanted any grass cut. I traveled all over, and, and I couldn't get no job. Now me and old Boomerang has to eat, no matter who, if he is contrary. So I had to look for something new work. I traded that lawnmower off for a cross-cut saw, but... That was such hard work that I give it up. Then I got a chance to buy this here outfit cheap, and I bought it. Eradicate then went on to tell how he had purchased the portable sawmill from a man who had no further use for it, and how he had managed to transport it from a distant village to the spot where Tom had met him. There he had secured permission to work a piece of woodland on shares, sawing up the smaller trees into cordwood. He had started in well enough, cutting down considerable timber, for the colored man was a willing worker, but when he tried to start his mill, he met with trouble. I counted on Boomerang helping me, he said to Tom. All he had to do was walk on that treadmill and keep going. That makes the saw go round and I saw the wood. But the trouble am that I can't get the Boomerang to move. I done tried every means I know on, and he won't go. I talked kind to him, and I talked Osh, I done beat him with the club, and I rub his ears as soft like, and he always did like that, but he won't go. I fed him on carrots, and I give him sugar, and I even starve him, but he won't go. He yeah, I've been trying for three days now, and I get him started, and not a stick have I saw. The man I'm working for, I give him shares, he get mad. You see, if I don't this saw wood pretty soon, he'd want to get a number to mill here. And now ask you fair, Mrs. Swift, ain't I got lots of trouble? You certainly seem to have, agreed Tom. But why is Boomerang so obstinate? Usually on a treadmill, a horse or mule has to work whether they like it or not. If they don't keep moving, the platform slides out from under them and they come up against the back bar. That's uh, what done happened to Boomerang declared Radicate. He done back up against the bar, and dare he stay. Tom went over and looked at the mill. The outfit was an old one and had seen much service, but the trained eye of the young inventor saw could still be used effectively. Boomerang watched Tom as though aware that something unusual was about to happen. Here I done invested my money in this here mill, complained Radicate, and I ain't sawed up a single stick. If I wasn't so kind-hearted, I'd chastise that mule worse than I has. That's what I would. Tom said nothing. He was stooping down, looking at the gearing that connected the treadmill with the shaft that revolved the saw. Suddenly he uttered an exclamation. Rad, have you been monkeying with this machinery? He asked. Me? Good land, Mrs. Swift. No, sir. I wouldn't teach it. It's just as I got it from the man I bought it off. It worked when he had it, but he used a horse. It's all due to the corn trainers of Boomerang, and if I... No, it's not the mule's fault at all, exclaimed Tom. The mill is out of gear, and tread is locked, that's all. The man you bought it off probably did it so you could haul it along the road. I'll have it fixed for you in a few minutes. Wait till I get some tools. From the bag on his motorcycle... Tom got his implements. He first unlocked the treadmill so that the inclined platform on which the animal slowly walked could revolve. No sooner had he done this than Boomerang, feeling the slats under his roofs moving away, started forward. With a rattle, the treadmill slid around. Good land of mercy! It's going! cried Eradicate delightedly. It's sure am going! He added as he saw the mule, with nimble feet, send the revolving, endless string of slats around and around. But your saw don't move, Mr. Swift. Yo am pretty smart at fixing it as much as yo has, but I reckon it's too busted to ever saw any wood. I just got bad luck, that's what I has. Nonsense, exclaimed Tom. The sawmill will be going in a moment. All I have to do is throw it into gear. 
See here, Rat, when you want the saw to go, you just throw this handle forward. That makes the gears mesh. Uh, what's that about mush? asked Eradicate. Mesh, not mush. I, I mean it makes the cogs fit together, see? And Tom pressed the lever. In an instant, with a musical whir, the saw began revolving. Hurrah, there it go, golly, de see the saw move, cried the delighted colored man. He seized a stick of wood, and in a thrice it was sawed through. Whoop! yelled Eradicate. I'm saved. Now bless your messes, Swift. You certainly am a wonder. Now I'll show you how it works, went on Tom. When you want to stop Boomerang, you just pull this handle. That locks the tread and he can't move it. And suiting the actions to his words, Tom stopped the mill. Then, he went on, when you want him to move, you pull the handle this way. And he showed the darky how to do it. In a moment, the mule was moving again. Then Tom illustrated how to throw the saw in and out of gear, and in a few minutes the sawmill was in full operation, with a most energetic colored man feeding in logs to be cut up into stove lengths. "'You ought to have an assistant, Rad,' said Tom, after he'd watched the work for a while. "'You could get more done then, and move on to some other wood patch. "'That's right, Mr. Swip. So I had. But I'd done try and couldn't get any. I had several colored men, but they'd rather whitewash and clean chicken coops.' I guess I'd have to go it alone. I asked the white man yesterday if he'd like to pitch in and help, but he said he didn't like work. He was a tramp, and he had the nerve to ask me for money. Me, a hard-working coon. You didn't give it to him, I hope. No, indeedy. But he came so close to me that I was scared he might take it from me. So I kept hold of a club. He sure was a bad-looking tramp, and he kept laughing all the while like he was happy. "'What's that?' cried Tom, struck by the words of the colored man. "'Did he have a thick brown beard?' "'That's what he had,' answered Eradicate, pausing in the midst of his work. "'He sure was a sunny sort of tramp. "'His hands didn't look like they never worked, "'and he had a funny blue ring one finger. "'Only it wasn't a regular ring, you know. "'It was pushed right down into his skin, "'like a man I see at the circus once, "'all covered with funny figures.' "'Tom leaped to his feet. Which finger was the blue ring tattooed on? He asked, and he waited anxiously for the answer. Let me see. Uh, it wanted the right. No, no. It wanted the little finger of the left hand. Are you sure, Rad? Sure, Mr. Swift. I took tickling notice, because he carried a stick in that same hand. It must be my man, Happy Harry, exclaimed Tom half aloud. Which way did he go, Rad, after he left you? He went up the lake show, replied the colored man. He uh, asked me if I knowed an old big house up there where nobody lived in. I said I did. Then he left, and I was glad of it. Which house did you mean, Rad? Why, well, I don't mention what uh, General Harkness used to live in before the war. There ain't nobody lived in it for uh, some years now, and it's uh, deserted. Maybe a lot of old tramps stay in it, and that's where this man was going. Maybe, assented Tom, who is all excitement now. Just uh, where is this house, Rad? Uh, way up there ahead of Lake Carpola. I used to work up there for a while, but uh, it had been a good many years since quality folks lived there. Why, did you want to see that man, Mr. Swift? Yes, Rad, I did, and very badly, too. I think it's the very person I want, but don't say anything about it. I'm going to take a trip up to that strange mansion. Maybe I'll get on the trail of Happy Harry and the men who robbed me. I'm much obliged to you, Rad, for this information. It's a good clue, I think. Strange that you should meet the very tramp I've been searching for. Well, I sure am obliged to you, Master Swift, for fixing my sawmill. That's all right. <laughs> what you told me more than pays for what I did, Rad. Well, I'm going home now to tell Dad, and then I'm going to start out. Yesterday you said it was. You saw Happy Harry? Well, I'll get right after him. And leaving a somewhat surprised but very much delighted colored man behind him, Tom mounted his motorcycle and started for home at a fast pace. End of chapter 21